In this video, you'll see tips for how to install a Delta shower valve using copper pipes. This is handy if your local code requires copper. So the first tip I have is to set the valve at the right height as well as to drop your elbow. Then to also secure a scrap piece of the backer board you're gonna be using to the studs and then dry fit the tile to see how much blocking you need to put in the wall for the valve. In this case, I'm using a two by 10. I set it flush with the adjacent wall and screwed it in place with three inch construction screws. I also made sure that I double checked that the valve was flush with the finished wall before moving on. Then I added blocking in the wall for the drop ear elbow. This will be for your shower arm. I just wanna make sure that the end of that is flush with the studs. Then I'm gonna be using Burns-O-Matic map gas along with their TS4000 igniter. I highly recommend a flame protector as well as H2O flux. This is water soluble. Also this rigid deburring tool is fantastic. You'll want that. Get a cutter. This is the auto cut tool. It's great for tight spots. You'll need a wire brush as well as OD safe flow lead free solder. That's important. You can use scotch bright pads or these nylon grip pads or emery cloth to clean the pipe. That's gonna be really, really critical. You can use galvanized screws for the securing of the valve. And then we're gonna be using a bunch of different fittings which I'll get into, but this is the drop your elbow that I recommend. And then also getting yourself a double A sized mini rester. Those are important. And then you'll need a torpedo level. This is the valve we're gonna be using. It has four inlets. You can solder your copper pipe into all four inlets. The important thing is to remove any of the parts that might melt when you solder it. So the bonnet nut and the plug. There's also a little plastic piece inside that you need to remove. And then you can also remove the integrated shutoffs if you have them, because those have O-rings that will melt whenever you solder the pipes in place. Also remove the plaster guard before you do any of this. You'll also wanna get type L copper, it's color coded blue, and make sure the valve is facing up when you do all the dry fitting. Now in this case, I centered it on the drain and made sure it was at 45 inches. A laser level really helps out with this, so if you have one, I recommend using it. So what I did is I just dry fit the valve and secured it to the wood blocking using galvanized screws. The next step was to get a measurement from the top port to where I need it to be for the drop your elbow and I cut a piece of copper to size using the auto cut tool and that's the drop your elbow. I put that on and I dry fit everything and made sure the drop your elbow was centered on the drain. Then I deburred the pipe both the inside and the outside. This is critical for water flow. I also used a wire brush to clean out the drop your elbow an emery cloth and a nylon grip pad to clean the copper pipe properly. Also, you can apply just a little bit of the ODH2O flux. You wanna make sure that you mix that up so that the salts are mixed in with it. Apply just a thin layer of that, about a one half inch into the pipe and do the same thing for the fitting. So you put those two together, twist it, and then this is important, wipe off any of the excess flux. That's gonna give you a great solder job. Then I applied heat to the pipe and then to the top of the fitting and started the soldering process from the bottom. The solder will be sucked into the joint and you can use the acid brush to wipe away any of the drips and then remove any of the excess flux that's on the pipe. As you can see here, that process works out really well and you'll get professional results. The next step was to prep all the rest of the pipe. So I use emery cloth, the nylon grip pad, I applied the flux to it, and then I also did this to all of the fittings. And by the way, you should also be using the deburring tool on all the pipes as well. Make sure you wipe off any of the excess flux and do this for the pipe that's rising up to the valve. And then you can just flux all of your fittings. These are T fittings. I'm gonna be using these because we're gonna be putting the water hammer arresters into them. The next step was to add the horizontal pipe that goes into the valve. So I prepped that, applied the flux, put it into the T fitting, applied flux to the valve itself, push those together and the water hammer arresters I also prepped with the emery cloth and applied flux to those. It's important to use these per your local code. Then I wiped all the fittings and made sure the flux wasn't in there. Also, you want to make sure all your pipes are nice and plumb, so use the torpedo level for that. Then you can apply flux and do the exact same thing for the right side or the cold water side going into the valve. Now for the bottom port, I deburred that and made sure I prepped it with emery cloth. We're just going to cap that with a short three inch piece. So apply flux, put a cap in it, apply flux to the bottom of the valve and push that in place. Then you can do a little bit of a trick here and hold that using a mix measuring tape, make sure that the riser pipe is plumb, secure it, and then add your flame protectors inside the wall. Now what I do is I apply the flame to the pipe and then to the fitting and start from the bottom because heat rises and this will help you get really great looking joints. So I did that for the left, as you can see it looks good, and then I did that for the right or cold water inlet side. So these are really easy to do. 
then what you can do is focus on the bottom. So solder the cap in place and then solder this little piece of pipe into the bottom port. And this is an easy way to do it with that measuring tape. And then what I recommend is starting on the valve. So starting and working your way from left to right. So I heated up the left port and then I worked my way to the T did that, did the bottom portion of the T, and that heats up the pipe so you don't have to focus too much heat on the water hammer arrestor. Then you can do the top port, that's the riser pipe going to the drop your elbow, adjust your flame protector, make sure that you don't catch anything on fire, and then you can do the last portion of the port and move on to the right side, which is the cold water inlet. So again, focusing on the bottom, then the horizontal portion of the T, and that gets the tea plenty hot so you don't have to again overheat the section where the water hammer arrestor is. So as you can see here, you're gonna get great results if you follow these tips. Make sure you clean the copper pipes, remove any of the excess flux because it is an acid and it'll eat away at the copper pipes and create corrosion that you don't want to see down the road. But hopefully these tips help you out with your Delta shower valve installation. If you do have any questions, let me know in the comments. And if you think that this video helped you out and gave you some great tips, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for more tutorials. So thanks for watching today. I hope you have a good one and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.